So greetings from Pennsylvania once again. We're over here in Lebanon County today. Just up the way there is Swatara State Park, which we're no stranger to. But we're here on what's called State Game Lands number 80. And I'm gonna hike, I'm gonna try to make a loop trail that's been on my mind for a while. I'm parked here at the parking lot. Right down here is old, I guess what they call Old State Road. Um, right off of, uh, was it Monroe Valley Road? I think it's what it's called. And we're gonna head up this trail up behind me. And according to Google Maps, what I can see from the train feature, it looks like this is an old road that goes all the way to the top of the Blue Mountain. In fact, let me throw a clip up right now, or a picture showing you, you can clearly see the mark of the old road as it goes up the mountain. Yeah, so hopefully this does go all the way to the top of the mountain. Like I said, it looks like it does. And then it'll, of course, you can't really see the top of the mountain from here, but the Appalachian Trail is up top there. Looks like it meets up with that, and then we'll take the Appalachian Trail back along the ridge of the mountain, and the Appalachian Trail meets up with this road a little ways up, and we'll just kind of hike back this way to the parking lot. That's the plan. So that is the goal today, to see what kind of a loop trail this makes. I've talked about it in the past, I kind of try to find trails that make a loop so you don't have to go hike in the same way you hike out. Um, years ago, I hiked up this old road a little bit. I don't think I was filming back then, but I didn't go very far. So, this might be a, one of those possible cool trails you could do. That's part of the goal of this channel is to point out trails and things for people to do. So let's see, let's see what, how this, let's see how this works. See if this makes for a cool trail or like a loop trail. I don't think this road has a name. Maybe we'll have to come up with a name for it. Anyway, let's, uh, let's get going. I'm already going, but let's uh, quit yapping. Once again, you can, it's clearly winter time now. Well, we've got the rooster crowing down there. It is still morning. I'm not sure, maybe 10 o'clock. Also, I gotta keep track of the time too. See how many, roughly how many miles this is then. Yeah, so it's 1045. Right now, that's kind of how I keep track of how many miles I go. It is on my list to get something else. I mean, I do have a GPS, but uh, keeping that on the whole hike kind of wears the batteries down really quickly. Kind of looking at getting maybe one of those watches or something that keeps track of how many miles you go. You know, looking to get one of those it's this winter. We'll see. But keeping track of my time is an easy way to figure out roughly how many miles you go. They say, the average hiker does about 2.2 miles per hour. So I just rounded off the two miles per hour. So if a hike takes me three hours, that's basically a six mile hike, roughly. Of course you do take breaks, and sometimes going uphill is slower. So it, it gives you a rough idea of how long the hike is though. So up ahead through the trees there, you can kind of see the top of the Blue Mountain. Let me f zoom in on that. Let's find the zoom button, <laughs> here we go. That's where we're headed. Not that exact location, but now you can actually see the mountain. We're not headed straight up. That other clip I showed you, this trail kind of just kind of goes up at an angle. So even though we're going uphill, it'll be nice to like a low grade uphill hike. Which beats going like straight up the mountain. And as always too, we'll be keeping our eyes open, see if there's any old foundations up here. I mean, it's a pretty well established like a uh, road as far as you know, these forest roads go. So I'm not sure I'm not sure if this is just a, a logging road at one point or if you know people lived up this way back in the day. But we'll like I said, we'll keep our eyes open. There are lots of rocks up here, but nothing in the shape of, of, of a foundation or something like that. Yeah, I mentioned that I was here years ago. That's looking back the way we came. This might be as far as I came up. 
I remember there being like a logged out area. I'm not quite sure this is it, but that was prior to 2015, so that was some time ago. Like I said, I wasn't filming. I don't think I was filming back then when I was up here. But uh, anyway, maybe it, maybe it was further up. Just a quiet winter day. Still hear the traffic. Um, Interstate 80 is just back behind us. Like when I first did the intro, you might heard some traffic. That's what it's coming from. We should be getting over further. We're heading further and further away from that traffic. So. Oh, I think I see some barberries. <laughs> that stem in there all that bright splash of red yep actually yeah yeah that's what they are look at all of them if you're a winter bird that's a smorgasbord of yumminess there all right looks like we have a choice here crossroads you can go to the right or to the left. But we're gonna head to the left because we need to, you can kind of barely see the top of the mountain up there. That's, we need to head that way. I think I remember seeing this on uh, Google Maps. So we need to make sure, we need to be going up too. That looks like it starts heading more uh, downhill. So we need to go up, so up we'll go. And I'm hoping for a view up here too at the top. Cause I hiked, you know, I did, a, I did, I've done all the Appalachian Trail in Pennsylvania. So I think, I remember there being a view or two up this way. I think one was an old power line that went up with a mountain. But we'll see if there's one where hopefully this trail meets the AT. I'm pretty sure it does, but we'll have to wait and see for that too. But anyway, I'm hoping for a view of some kind maybe up there. I know once we're on the AT headed back towards the Sitar Gap, there are some, some views. And it's winter time, so you can see through the trees better, but hopefully, hopefully you have something. I'm hoping right where this trail meets the AT. Being already looking down that way, it's kind of some views. There's, you can see the other mountain range over there. I think it's called Little Blue Mountain. Yeah, so we're, all this is new to me now. Never been up this far now. Yeah, no signs of any uh, old structures or anything yet. I had my first critter sighting in there. Oh, there's a, oh you hear that's a red-tailed hawk. I saw one fly up there earlier, but squirrel just ran across here somewhere. I have no idea where he is now. But it's been pretty quiet. So that's the way it is. This is you know, this is midday. It's like 11 something, so most animals are kind of laying low. They lay low during midday, if that makes sense. I always gonna see a lot. Dusk and dawn is when you see the most critters out and about and we have another crossroads but obviously that one goes back down probably meets up with the other one that we saw earlier but we need to stay to the left and we need to keep going uphill actually I can see the top of the ridge up there the mountain so if you do this trail just Keep taking the left. All right, so I think I can zoom in on some birds up here. Some juncos. Let me try and find one for you. There's one right there. K 
can't quite, that's as far as I can zoom in on that one, but. Yeah, they only let you get so close. <laughs> I mean, that's for their safety. That could be a predator. But there's some, the ones that fly off that had like the, the uh, white in their tail, those are the dark eyed juncos they're called. Uh, I did see a cardinal fly off that way too. They're all kind of hiding. Anyway, now no one's, no one's flying off now either. All right. Yeah, so up ahead the trail starts to narrow a bit. It starts turning into more of like a four-wheeler trail. Whereas back behind us, more of like a, a Jeep trail. Almost like you come up to here in your vehicle, this would be like the turnaround spot. But you can see, see the, the top of the ridge there through the trees. So this might be our final push right here. Famous last words. <laughs> it's a trail like it definitely narrows up through here. Looks like we have yet another fork in a trail. Once again, I'm going to stay to the left. That's, that's the more major trail going that way, but we need to go up. So I think this is, yeah, once again, there's the top of the ridge. So here the trail gets even smaller. If I can soon turn into just a footpath up here. Not as well maintained, you got thorns draping across the trail and stuff, so. Upwards and onwards. Yeah, just taking a little breather. Getting a little steeper, but you can see how they made this trail. They just took all the rocks that were here and laying them, you know, line up here. So I kind of wonder how old this is. But yeah, almost to the top. Getting some more views, winter views down through there. All right, it's good to take a small little break and we'll keep on going. So we're closing in on the top. I heard a noise over here. You hear that? That is the sound of water. There's a spring right up top here. Cool. Coming right out of the mountainside up here. You can hear, see it back there. Dripping down. Making its way underneath the rocks here. Wonder if it has a name. I mean, we're literally, it's kind of cool because we're literally like almost at the top. Wow. All right, kind of covered in thorns. Oh, speaking of thorns. It's nice that this could all be cleared away. I don't know that too many people come up here though, but yeah. All right. Yeah. Got the rocks here now. Yeah, there's lots of thorns draping across the trail. You just kind of got to step on them. Yeah, there's looking down. We are just about there. Yeah, so we're now at the top of, well, almost at the top, just there, a little bit ways up there. I think the Appalachian Trail is right up there, but I'm not sure if there's gonna be a view right up there, but I thought to get a shot from here. In the summer, you wouldn't have a view down here, but here in the winter you do. Pretty nice day to be up here though. Yeah, so right up here should be the AT. One last final push. Oh, is this it right here? Yeah, there's a path right here. Yeah, right here's the AT. You can see the path going up that way. Whew. All right. Yeah, no view in particular right at this point, but I think up that way more there's a view, but we're gonna start heading. Oh, I see a white blaze up there, yeah. I need to find a place to take a little break. Have a little snack. Check it out, there's just a little bit of snow up here. 
small bit because in the shade of the tree there. So, I don't know, this might be a nice place to take a little break right there. Get time to cool down just a little bit. Probably dress a little bit too warm. Well, it's actually, it is chilly, but coming up, coming up the mountain, oh, this, this thing is a bit warm, but kind of sweating a little bit on my neck. So I want to just relax, stop sweating for a little bit before we continue on the way. So no more uphill. Now that we're here on the AT, now we're just going to make our way back uh, west on the AT, back towards the Sotara Gap. Make our way down there into, into Sotara State Park. Then we have a little bit of hiking, a little bit of a road walk back to where I parked. But I'll show all that so you know exactly what I did in this video. So let's, uh, let's have something to eat. <laughs> all right, break time's over. Cooled down quite a bit. Yeah, still some more snow. But uh, we gotta get going. Yeah, it took me just about exactly an hour to get to the top. So that made that trail up here about two miles long. Roughly. So it should be roughly the same back. Let's see what time is it now. Uh, um, well, 11.50, so. Yeah, now the easy walking is over. But hey, we might get some other views from up here, too. Now that we're up here on the ridge. Yeah, I forget what year I hiked this section. It's it like a nine mile section from uh, back east is Route 645. From there to Sotara Gap. I think it was nine miles, this section. Yeah, just thinking to myself, I don't remember it being so open up here when I hiked, but I think I hiked this section in like the summertime. So this would have all been covered in foliage. You wouldn't be able to see out there at all, but here in the winter, you, you feel a lot more open and exposed up on the ridge line like this. snow. <laughs> probably the most we've seen so far. That probably won't last the day though. I mean maybe it will but it's supposed to get up in like the mid 40s so. trying to think how long that snow has been up here. That was Thursday, past Thursday that that snow. Today's Tuesday. So it's been up here for like five days. <laughs> so that just shows like here up on top of the mountain, like everywhere else in the world, you know, the snow lasts longer. Even though this is not like a huge mountain. Same thing still happens. I've been showing you glimpses of this side of the ridge, but you know we're definitely up on a, a long mountain ridge. You look at the other side and see off that way too. Not as clear, but you can just see it kind of kind of comes up, goes back down again. Yeah, as I'm walking along here, I just got different things going through my mind. You know, you know, I have to talk about, you know, getting that log cabin out in the woods or that old historic home, but there's something else I think about sometimes too. See, not that I'm here on the Appalachian Trail, but I think it'd be neat to own a place, own some land um, right along the Appalachian Trail just to set up an area 
uh, for the, the hikers, because there's there's tons of, I forget, it's like 2,000 a year to hike the Appalachian Trail or something like that, but they're always, they're always needing places to camp and stay. Um, there are shelters along the way, but we need to offer a place for free for them to camp and eventually add other things like little pavilions or cabins for them to stay at or place to shower, do laundry, offer the, you know, place to stock up on food and stuff. It'll just be kind of a neat thing to do. Kind of think about that sometimes. Alrighty though, but time to start heading downhill into the Swatara Gap. I can make out the Interstate 81 out there, so starting to hear the traffic noise a little bit again, so we're gonna, it's not a steep downhill yet, but we're nearing the downhill part here. I mean, it's already started a little bit, but got a lot rockier here too. Well, false alarm, <laughs> back up we go. Just a little bit. But yeah, we can make it out there. Well, I can see the Swatara Creek down there. You can see the Interstate, Interstate 81. We're still we're still getting near the gap though. Forgot about this little uphill section here. All right, so now we're descending down into the gap. For sure this time. <laughs> Yeah, we were up here, I think it was it earlier this year, I think. I did that video on the the flag that they draped across the gap from one side to the other. Let me show you over there again. Let me quick show that to you. I mean, the flag isn't there, but you can see this is this side of the gap, and over there is the other side. In that video, I talked about how they they, they strung a cable from one side to the other and hang a, hung a huge flag from there. I think it was for the troops headed off to the, was it the Spanish-American War, I believe it was? But then the flag, due to winds going through the gap, the, I don't think the troops ever got to see. I think the flag came down. No, the, the cable snapped, I think. And they had to quick get the cable off the, the railroad that went through that was bringing the troops through. So, but yeah, we came, up, we came up here for that video, up to this spot. So we're at the two hour hike, uh, the two hour hike, the two hour time for this hike now. If I think of the right word to say, so about uh, four miles you've done. So by the time we get back to where I parked, maybe two and a half hours, we'll see. So maybe a five mile hike, I'm thinking, but that's just a guess at the moment. Because that'll, that'll all depend on your own speed and how fast you hike and how many breaks you take and things like that. So the Appalachian Trail has brought us down to this lane. Um, if you go that way, it takes you up to the, uh, was it the Youth for Christ camp up there? Of course, that's the way we came down. But the, the Appalachian Trail continues on down that way. But I'm gonna take this old, I'm gonna take this lane. This will take us down to the, what's called Old State Road. The Appalachian Trail does too, but it kind of winds more down that way towards the interstate. So I'm gonna, It'll be a slightly shortcut here. So we're gonna leave the AT behind. Yeah, there you can see the other side of the gap up there. You actually come to think of it, I think the Appalachian Trail is just down here. But anyway, a little bit easier to go down this way. So I'll stick with it. But you could take the AT like down to the bottom here too. All right, we made it to the bottom. This is the old state road, so we're gonna turn left again. There's Interstate 81. Always kind of an awesome sight. Going through the gap here. Yeah, if you stay on the AT, the AT comes down. I think that second, pot, the, the second, what do you call it up there, is where it comes down, joins this road, so either way. But this is pretty steep right here. All right, let's finish this last leg of the journey. Head up this way. And we'll just keep going straight. I don't need to cross the bridge. 
Although this bridge was replaced recently and the one that it replaced is, they have it preserved up here a ways. Yeah, it's called the Inwood Iron Truss, quarter mile of the head. That's the way, I showed it to you before. And I should mention too that down here at the bottom is the Union Canal or the Pine Grove Extension. We filmed up this way. It was coming when we did that video. Uh, I think you can kind of see. Uh, I forget how much you can see in this section, but yeah, it ran right through here. You gotta see some raised elements like the towpath trail up there. But yeah, it came right up through here. And over there it is, the old Inwood Iron Truss. Oh, yeah, I, I showed that to you before in other videos. All right, but our parking lot where we parked is just around a bend, I think, up here. Or at least, hopefully. <laughs> All right, so the parking area is just up ahead. But that way, the road goes that way. But I see our, the trail we took just goes up there, so almost there. Let's see if the Jeep is still up here. Yeah, I see. I see her poking her nose out the front there. All right, so it's about 1.30, so hold on a second, do the math in my head. I think it came, comes out about two hours and 45 minutes hike, so almost a three hour hike, at least for me. Like I said, it might vary depending on who does it, so probably just under six miles or something like that, five and a half, six mile hike, somewhere around there, so yeah. See, so if you're interested in this hike, I enjoyed it. Um, it is winter time, you know, in the summertime, spring, fall, we would have seen more you know, wildlife and wildflowers and things like that, but kind of in the shade there. But it is what it is sort of winter, but still a nice hike. And this going up, going this way is an easy way to get up to the top of the mountain. If you go the other way, you got some steep hikes up in the gap and stuff. But anyway, as always, folks, thanks for coming along, and hopefully we'll see you on the next one.